Horseshoe kidney is the most common form of renal fusion anomaly. It occurs in one in every 400 people. It is the midline fusion of the two kidneys. Each kidney has its own ureter and pelvis. The two kidneys typically fuse at the lower poles. Horseshoe kidney is usually ectopic and located in lower position than the normal kidney. The two kidneys are fused through the lower poles by a connecting band of renal tissue called an isthmus. The isthmus usually situated anterior to the aorta and inferior vena cava. This video clip shows a case of horseshoe kidney. As you can see, this is the right kidney. The lower pole of the right kidney is endless as we continue scanning. This is a transverse view of the aorta showing the isthmus anterior to the aorta and IVC. As we continue, we can see the left kidney. This is a longitudinal view of the left upper quadrant of the same patient. It shows that the left kidney lies in a lower position than the normal kidney. This is a transverse view of the midline in the same patient. It shows a horseshoe kidney. The isthmus of the horseshoe kidney is seen anterior to the aorta and inferior vena cava. The isthmus in this case is composed of thick functioning renal tissue. This is the right kidney. And this is the left kidney. Approximately 30% of patients with horseshoe kidneys also have other urinary tract anomalies. Several complications can be associated with horseshoe kidney, the most common are hydronephrosis, infection, or stone formation. Recurrent infection occurs due to reflux and UPJ obstruction. Stone formation occurs due to stasis and infection. This is a transverse view of the abdomen, shows renal isthmus in a patient with horseshoe kidney. The isthmus is seen anterior to the aorta and inferior vena cava. As you can see there is bilateral renal stones, as the red circles are outlining. This is a longitudinal view of the left kidney in the same patient. As you can see, the left kidney shows marked hydronephrosis, with thinning of the renal parenchyma. This is a longitudinal view of the right kidney in the same patient. It shows a renal stone. Horseshoe kidney can be complicated by hydronephrosis and stone formation. Duplex kidney is a common congenital renal anomaly. It occurs in about 1 to 2% of the population. In a duplex kidney, the kidney has two pelvicalisial systems that are associated with a single ureter or with double ureters. Most duplex kidneys are asymptomatic and diagnosed incidentally. It may be associated with other anomalies, such as reflux, ectopic ureteric orifice, or ureteroceal. The upper moiety tends to be associated with obstruction or ureteroceal, and the lower moiety tends to be associated with vesicoureteric reflux. The majority of duplex kidneys are unilateral. On ultrasound, the duplex kidney appears to have two central echogenic renal sinuses with intervening bridging renal parenchyma, as you can see in this image. This is a scene clip of a longitudinal ultrasound examination of the left kidney. It shows the absence of hilar fat in the mid-pole of the kidney with a complete band of renal cortex. That in this patient is diagnostic for a duplex kidney. No evidence of hydronephrosis in either moiety. This is another case of duplex kidney. This is the upper moiety. 
This is the lower moiety. There is no hilar fat in the midpole of the kidney, with a complete band of renal tissue separating the sinus fat into two compartments. Other sonographic findings suggestive of duplex kidney include a dilated ureter, the presence of a ureteroseal in the bladder, or significant hydronephrosis of one pole of the kidney. The presence of more than one of these features increases the likelihood of a duplex kidney. This is a video clip of a longitudinal ultrasound examination of the right kidney. It shows two central echogenic renal sinuses with intervening bridging renal parenchyma. These features are suggestive of duplex kidney. No evidence of hydronephrosis in either renal sinus. Ectopic pelvic kidney. The kidney normally ascends from the pelvis to the renal fossa during its course of development. During this migration, it rotates inwards so that the renal hilum faces medially. A failure of this mechanism causes the kidney to remain in the pelvis. In this case, it is called ectopic pelvic kidney. In pelvic kidney, the renal pelvis is directed anterior rather than medial. In most cases, a pelvic kidney is an incidental finding and is usually asymptomatic. Complications of pelvic kidney include vesicoureteric reflux, urinary tract infections, hydronephrosis, and renal stones. This video clip shows a case of bilateral pelvic kidneys. As you can see, the right kidney is located on the right side of the pelvis, in close relation to the urinary bladder. This is the left kidney. The left kidney is malrotated with its hilum facing anterior and the renal pelvis is dilated. Bilateral pelvic kidneys are rare, but have been reported. Extrarenal pelvis An extrarenal pelvis is a normal anatomical variant. It refers to the presence of the renal pelvis outside the renal hilum. It is found in about 10% of the population. In this condition, the renal pelvis is unconfined by solid renal parenchyma, and consequently, it may appear baggy and dilated even when unobstructed. Extrarenal pelvis is frequently misdiagnosed as hydronephrosis or a parapelvic cyst. On ultrasound, it is best seen in a transverse section through the renal hilum, as you can see in this image. It can be differentiated from true hydronephrosis by the absence of caliceal dilatation. This video clip shows a transverse view of the right kidney through the renal hilum. It demonstrates a baggy extrarenal pelvis. The renal calyces are not dilated and the renal parenchyma is preserved, confirming the diagnosis of extrarenal pelvis. This should not be confused with hydronephrosis. This video clip shows another case of extrarenal pelvis. As you can see, this is a transverse view of the right kidney through the renal hilum. The renal pelvis is extrarenal and is dilated. Again, the calyces are not dilated. Dromedary hump is a normal anatomical variant of the kidney. It is a prominent focal bulge on the lateral border of the left kidney, caused by a splenic impression onto the supralateral adjacent renal parenchyma. It is similar in appearance to the hump of a dromedary camel, thus the name. The incidence of this normal anatomic variant is about 0.5%. It can sometimes mimic a renal neoplasm and is therefore considered a renal pseudotumor. 
On ultrasound, the dromedary hump shows the same echogenicity as the adjacent normal renal parenchyma. While renal tumor may appear as a heterogeneous mass, with areas of cystic changes and hemorrhage. On color Doppler ultrasound, it demonstrates a normal vascular pattern of the renal cortex within the hump, as you can see in this image. This video clip shows a case of dromedary hump. As you can see, this is a longitudinal view of the left kidney. It shows a focal bulge arising from the lateral border of the left kidney. This bulge shows the same echogenicity as the adjacent normal renal parenchyma, consistent with a dromedary hump. The inferior edge of the spleen is seen superiorly, adjacent to the kidney. This is another video clip of the same case. As you can see, on color Doppler ultrasound, the dromedary hump demonstrates a normal vascular pattern of the renal cortex within the hump. Doppler ultrasound can help to differentiate a dromedary hump from a true renal neoplasm. This video clip shows another case of dromedary hump. This is a longitudinal view of the left kidney. It shows a focal bulge arising from the lateral border of the left kidney. Again, this bulge shows the same echogenicity as the adjacent normal renal parenchyma. On color Doppler ultrasound, the dromedary hump shows a normal vascular pattern of the renal cortex within the hump. Junctional parenchymal defect is a normal anatomical variant of the kidney. It is a defect or line representing incomplete embryologic fusion of the upper and lower poles of kidney. This normal variant is more commonly seen on the right kidney. The anterosuperior aspect of the kidney is a characteristic location for junctional parenchymal defect. This anatomical variant can be confused with a renal scar or laceration. On ultrasound, junctional parenchymal defect appears as a hyperechoic defect or line at upper to middle third of the kidney. It extends from anterior surface of upper pole of the kidney into the hilum as you can see in this image. No associated parenchymal loss is a useful sign to differentiate this normal anatomical variant from cortical scar. This video clip shows a case of junctional parenchymal defect. As you can see, this is a longitudinal view of the right kidney. It shows an echogenic line extending from the anterosuperior aspect of the kidney into the sinus fat. This is a characteristic location for a junctional parenchymal defect. No associated parenchymal loss was seen. This confirms the diagnosis and excludes cortical scarring. This video clip shows another case of junctional parenchymal defect. As you can see, this is a longitudinal view of the right kidney. It shows an echogenic line extending from the anterosuperior aspect of the kidney into the sinus fat. Again, this is a characteristic location for a junctional parenchymal defect.